A bill would prevent firing employees who refuse vaccines, FDA warns about hackable insulin pumps and a recall begins, and a blood test for Alzheimer's may simplify diagnoses, reduce need for invasive tests. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019. Happy Independence Day. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Nursing homes, hospitals, and other employers who require workers to get flu or measles vaccinations would not be able to punish employees who refuse them under pending Ohio legislation. House Bill 268 would bar an employer from refusing to hire, firing, demoting, or otherwise punishing an employee who chooses not to receive a mandatory vaccination. It also allows employees to sue businesses for the violations. At least one national long-term care group has recommended mandatory vaccinations for nursing home personnel, and many other states and private companies have adopted policies in favor of mandatory shots. A 2016 study created credited more than a dozen statewide pro-vaccination policies with doubling compliance rates at healthcare facilities in those areas. But the last two flu vaccines have been ill-matched, and the 2019 shot was only 29% effective, the CDC said last week. The coming flu season has been predicted to be a dangerous season. The Ohio Hospital Association, the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, and other medical groups are opposing the legislation. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is warning patients and healthcare providers that certain Medtronic mini med insulin pumps are being recalled due to potential cybersecurity risks and recommends that patients using these models switch their insulin pump to models that are better equipped to protect against these potential risks. To date, the FDA is not aware of any confirmed reports of patient harm related to these potential cybersecurity risks. The potential risks are related to the wireless communication between Medtronic's mini med insulin pumps and other devices such as blood glucose meters, continuous glucose monitoring systems, the remote controller, and CareLink USB device used with these pumps. The FDA is concerned that due to cybersecurity vulnerabilities identified in the device, someone other than a patient, caregiver, or healthcare provider could potentially connect wirelessly to a nearby mini-med insulin pump and change the settings of the pump. This could allow a person to over-deliver insulin to a patient, leading to low blood sugar, or to stop insulin delivery, leading to high blood sugar and diabetic ketoacidosis. We'll be back right after this break. CNA TV. CNA TV. Memberships have changed over the years. This has been your long-term care news update. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of NACA. CNA TV. Don't miss out on any of the great programming on CNA TV. Subscribe today. A relatively simple blood test to detect Alzheimer's disease may reduce the need for more costly, specialized, and invasive diagnostic procedures, according to a new study. Collaborators from Lund University in Sweden and the Roche Pharmaceutical Company were able to identify an Alzheimer's blood marker with high accuracy using immunoassays, a commonly used laboratory test. Their study followed about 1,000 participants, including Alzheimer's patients with dementia, healthy seniors, and people with mild cognitive impairment. The immunoassays method was developed by Roche and is fully automated. The new method, if successful in further testing, is expected to be more cost-effective and accessible than current diagnostic tests, which include spinal fluid sampling and brain imaging. The study foresees the technique being used to improve diagnostics and primary care, allowing more people to get timely treatment for Alzheimer's symptoms. It could also be used in screening individuals for inclusion in clinical drug trials against Alzheimer's disease. A major primary care study is planned for the fall. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.